This is Southern Cross News with Joe Palmer. Good evening everyone and welcome to Southern Cross News. The housing crisis is continuing to escalate. A new Anglicare report finding low-income earners are locked out of finding a home to rent in Tasmania. Young people or parents on welfare are found to be facing the brunt with a severe lack of properties suitable for them to call home. While the government says it's treating the issue as a top priority. The harsh reality of the state of our rental market. People camping at Hobart showgrounds, priced out of suitable properties. It looked like it was getting better, to be honest, up until last weekend, and then we've had three more cases present over the weekend. It's a reality detailed in Anglicare's latest report, finding that over a weekend in March, there were 562 rentals advertised, 40% less than four years ago. A substantial number of whole properties have been taken out of the private rental market into um, the Airbnb, the short-term stay market. Some families spending 75% of their income on rent. You are then having a very small amount of money left to cover your other basics, your, your utility bills, your food, your healthcare, your transport. The squeeze being felt across the board with no affordable rentals for single parents on welfare in the south and statewide there are no affordable properties for those on youth allowance and only 6% are suitable for parents who are receiving new start and who have two children. Unless we bring in some really sustainable long-term options, we're going to just see this cycle continuing with families here in this state. The government says it's acting to ease the pressure stemming from a growing economy. And of course with that growth it brings its own challenges. So uh, Minister Yench of course has outlined a multi-pronged approach. Uh, we're proactive every day. And that's simply not good enough uh, for Tasmania to have this issue uh, so prevalent when uh, the economy is going well. We know that there are people missing out on the uh, wealth creation that is happening. This Launceston-based real estate agent says first home buyers are struggling too. There is a level of frustration from buyers um, who are finding it very hard to find something that's suitable. Anglicare wants action at a state and federal level. It's calling for urgent investments into affordable housing stock, welfare payment increases, broad-based land tax to replace stamp duty, changes to negative gearing and capital gains and improved tenancy laws for increased security. We are treating it as a, a top priority. Louise Hedger, Southern Cross News. A Mowbray man charged over the assault of a 90-year-old woman inside her own home has appeared in court. Shane Weldon is still yet to enter a plea in relation to the charges. It's alleged he knocked elderly woman Beryl Dix unconscious in her Invermay home earlier this month. Mr Weldon has been remanded in custody and will reappear on May 7. Tasmania Police says it's mostly pleased with motorists following a blitz during school drop-off and pick-up times today. Police were out in force across the state focusing on speeding and parking infringements. In my experience we have quite often had more infringement notices issued. The focus for tomorrow is in relation to motorcyclists and fatigue. Unfortunately so far this year six motorcyclists have died on Tasmania roads. The crackdown is part of National Road Safety Week. The controversial Mount Wellington cable car could go to an elector poll. Hobart Alderman Jeff Briscoe has submitted a motion allowing residents to have their say on the project. It's the most important iconic uh, mountain we have and I think it's because it's known as the People's Mountain, I think the people should have some say in uh, whether uh, uh, the, the post cable car goes ahead. If successful, the poll will be held in October in conjunction with local government elections. Homeowners in the market for more efficient heating, solar panels or battery storage can take advantage of an extended loan scheme. It provides no interest lending to improve energy efficiency, but critics warn it's a glorified credit card that can come with hidden costs. This homeowner used the teals to purchase heat pumps, covering a large upfront cost and one that should save money in the long term. Uh, one was replacing an old pump, uh, heat pump that had failed and uh, we got another one upstairs where we'd previously been using a plug-in heater, which is much less efficient and much more costly to run. 
The scheme has been taken up by more than 2,000 Tasmanians and has now been extended until next April. It provides opportunity for householders in Tasmania, for small businesses, up to $10,000 over a three year period to have uh, no interest paid on that alone. But the critics warn the devil is in the detail. It's a line to the government's uh, bank to get more people onto Westpac books and to essentially get more people um, in debt through a credit card scheme. Westpac uh, provide that interest free uh, loan over those three years and of course the loan then has to be either paid off or extended. It's one of the topics the Greens say they'll push in the next session of Parliament as well as changes to gun laws. This was slipped under the door before the election. Uh, there is nothing like a mandate to weaken Tasmania's gun laws. In Parliament's upper house this session there'll be a sense of deja vu with the government continuing to push policies already rejected by the Legislative Council. There will be a number of controversial issues that will be debated in the Upper House, whether that be mandatory sentencing, whether it be the Taswater takeover or a whole host of other um, issues that were debated in the last term of government. Parliament opens tomorrow. Michael Breen, Southern Cross News. Performing veteran Mark Holden has touched down in Hobart today to take a trip down memory lane. He's researching his upcoming one-man show titled The Greatest Show on Earth, based on his family's performing history at the iconic Theatre Royal. I just love the history and I'm just so... To stand on the stage that my relatives, my forebears were on exactly 100 years ago and tell their story, it's my adventure before dementia. The greatest show on earth will open in Hobart in July. Tasmanian Museum um, Art Gallery staff have been putting on their dancing shoes after closing time. They've created a video to compete in an international competition showcasing museums across the world. The music video is set to Better the Devil You Know. TMAG is encouraging Tasmanians to get behind them by voting through the link on their Facebook page. Now let's take a look at the day's business and finance news with thanks to TASPLAN, your local super fund. The Australian share market has closed well into positive territory with strong support from a resurgent financial sector. The ASX 200 index has risen by 29.1 points. A short time ago, the Australian dollar was trading at 75.59 US cents and 82.54 Japanese yen. Tasmania will be snubbed for Test cricket next summer after the 2018-19 season fixture was released today. Australia will play just one international match in Tassie, an ODI against South Africa on November 11. It's the second season in a row where the state has missed out on Test matches. The last one played here in November 2016 when 17,000 people attended over four days. On that occasion, the Aussies were belted by South Africa after posting their lowest first innings total at home in more than 30 years. Lenorke's Ben Camerick says it was an honour to win the Anzac Day medal after a best on ground performance against the Tigers. He says the Pies are still hurting after their early exit from the TSL finals last year. I don't want to just win one myself, I want to win multiple. Like, not many people get to play in the grand final as well, let alone win one. So. I really want to get there again and win it. The Pies have another crucial clash this round against Clarence at KG5. And the votes are in for the TSL Player of the Year after Round 5. And as you just heard, Ben Camrick of Glenorchy was best on ground in the Anzac Day clash. Tom Couch made his presence felt on his return to North Launceston in the side's crushing win over North Hobart. And Sam Rundle, best for Launceston in its handy five-goal win over Clarence. To the leaderboard and Glenorchy's Daniel Joseph has held on to top spot while Brodie Powfreman trails by two votes. Richie Port is hinting he will give up his Wollonga Hill crown next year. After a podium finish in the Tour de Romandie, the Tasmanian says the Tour Down Under may no longer be part of his schedule as he aims for cycling's ultimate prize. In a return to form, Richie Port sent a memo to the cycling world with a third place finish in Switzerland. And there's the 2018 podium 
from the Tutoromani. But his comments post-race drew the most attention. Being from Australia, it's it's great to do the tour down under, but I'm not sure I'll go back there next year. I think it's more my coach, uh, David Bailey, who's uh, going to put the idea in my head. It would be a radical move for Port, who has been crowned King of Willunga Hill for five years running. He was the Tour Down Under's overall champion in 2017 and lost only on an unprecedented countback earlier this year. But achieving his ultimate goal, a Tour de France title, may force his sentimental home tour to fall by the wayside. Obviously not great to miss races like um, Paris-Nice and Tirreno or Catalonia, but maybe in the, with hindsight it is a better thing. I mean, normally I'd have been a little, a little better condition here. Port has been slowly building up to July's Tour de France, with the Tour de Romandie an important part of the journey. In today's fifth and final stage, fellow Tasmanian Will Clark made an attack with nine kilometres to go. So to hold off the peloton for nine kilometres, it's a tough one. You can accelerate, get the gap, but it's maintaining that gap, it really hurts. Clark couldn't hold the lead, caught by the peloton. Port buried among the masses. Thank you very much, he says. Punches the air. Now's the time, to be honest, to, to start uh, being serious. Port's next tour will be the Tour de Suisse in June. South Hobart's hero in the Laco Seljak Cup yesterday says his performance was a career highlight. Brazilian striker Renato De Vecchi Marine scored a hat trick in his side's dominant 5 1 win over Hobart Zebras. Nicknamed Nirvana because of his long hair, the goal sneak can see South Hobart going all the way in the cup. I'm playing in some good clubs and uh, here's one of the best. We training exactly what you do in matches. So when you do that, we win games. Launceston City, Northern Rangers and Devonport Strikers are also in the cup semi-finals. And finally tonight, a Tasmanian is the world champion of real tennis once again. 50-year-old Robert Fay defeating an opponent 19 years his junior to take the title in London. Real tennis is the original racket sport on which the modern game of tennis is based. Fay was the sport's world champion for 22 years before losing his crown at the last titles. He celebrated his return to the top with an ice cold beer. Good evening. Hobart, 16 degrees today. Launceston, 19. Burnie and Devonport, tops of 18 degrees. But Fingal warmed up to 23 to top our list today as temperatures over the east jumped above average. Friendly beaches, 22. And of course, it was picture perfect as usual at Swansea. Smithton and Lowhead, both 18. The Bass Strait Islands, 17. Strawn and Ooze, 16 degrees. A mid to high level cloud band pushed over the state today with some low level cloud in the gaps, mainly over the west and south of Tasmania. Now, our cloud is joined to a front near Western Australia via a jet stream. Onshore winds with, weak, uh, with a weak upper trough as stormy weather off New South Wales. Another trough has cloud over central Western Australia. Tomorrow the trough and cold front move over Western Australia again as the high develops a second centre over New South Wales. The winds west to northwesterly at 10 to 20 knots. They'll reach 30 knots over the south with a tendency to the northwest occurring later in the day. Swells up above 3 metres in western and southern waters. A strong wind warning on between Tasman Island and Low Rocky Point. And for tomorrow, Tuesday in Hobart, a sunny day and 21 degrees, 20 for Adventure Bay and 19 for Taralea. Launceston, fine as well. Partly cloudy though, a top of 20, 19 for Devonport, bit of cloud over Scottsdale and 18 degrees. For Burnie, tomorrow, sunny and 19, 17 the top for Strawn with a bit of cloud, Marawar 16 with cloudy conditions as well. And for St Helens, partly cloudy, 19, warming up to 21 over Swansea and Whitemark on Flinders, mostly sunny and 18 degrees. Fine and partly cloudy weather on the cards for Wednesday. We do have a gumboot and galoshes alert for Agfest with rain on the way on Thursday, developing mainly during the afternoon and showers statewide on Friday, clearing the east and southeast for a time. Cloudy but fine in Perth tomorrow. Adelaide cloudy as well, sunny but hazy over Melbourne, a frosty start in Canberra, a sunny 23 in Sydney and a possible shower for Brisbane. Little cloudy at the moment, 17 in Hobart, cooling right down to 12 in Launceston and 14 right now in Devonport. Joe, I've got to say I'm very impressed how you can grab the material from two old quilts, throw them together and nearly get a presentable dress out of it. I've got to give you A4 effort. Go away, go home. It's Monday, you've started on me already. That's all from the team for now. Thanks for your company. See you a little bit later.